All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. I'm here in San Diego and I'm joined today by Diane Darling, who is in Boston. How are you doing, Diane? I'm well. How are you? Staying Ex- warm. Staying warm. Excellent. You do that. Well, luckily you're indoors, as you just said. It's a bit yes. I- icy outside. Um, so uh, Diane is a networking and relationship building expert. She's author of McGraw Hill's definitive book on networking, the, uh, the Networking Survival Guide, which is what we want to talk about today. She also wrote another book, uh, Networking for Career Success. So um, Diane, w- w- tell me a little bit, first of all, w- w- about your focus on networking and why you, uh, you know, you, why you focused in on that particular area. Well, I focused on the area because I think it's... So let me let's go back and just define networking yes, for a second. Perfect. So we're on the same page because mm-hmm. um, yesterday this gentleman at a at a in one of my workshops I won't name the uh, higher ed institution says I'm a great networker and I mm-hmm. said, you know, no, you're not. You're a schmoozer. You know, I didn't say that out loud, but sure. that's what I said to myself. Um, he thinks he's a good networker because he's kind of flamboyant and and um, and you know, back slapping and, oh, how are you? And I'm, you know, I'm going to be doing a great job at this and very self-congratulatory. So I really want to just start from just the baseline of how I define networking. Mm -hmm. To me, networking is building relationships before you need them. Right. Is the number one thing. So I, I want to be kind to people. I want to be thoughtful to people. We're, we are recording this the day before Valentine's. Sure. Just think about giving yourself a little bit of kindness in the world. What could I do to be kind to somebody else or help them out? <laughs> then when it turns out they need to hire, then when it turns out they're looking to go into an organization, make a sale. Um, and I think, you know, making a sale is, I don't want to say easy, but it's, I say if you if you if I have what you need, hire me, and here's why, mm-hmm. and that's a sale. Versus, let me tell you about how great I am, and let me tell you why you need this, and blah blah blah. So, networking shortens the sales cycle right. significantly because then you find out who needs you. I got an email yesterday from someone saying. You know, do you have time between now and the end of February? And I said, I actually am traveling for two weeks. The only time I could do it is Friday. That's two days from now. Right. I'm giving a presentation on networking actually to salespeople on Friday afternoon. Because I met somebody, I think, two months ago, gave him my business card and just said, if I could ever be a resource for you. Mm-hmm. I followed up with a postcard and said, would love to be a resource for you at same time. So thinking about networking as relationship building, and this is tougher for salespeople because I want to close the sale. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And and people, right, people can tell the schmoozer, right? People can tell the disingenuous or the superficial or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so tell me, um, one the interesting thing about networking, right, is, I mean, obviously, once upon a time, it used to kind of be all about getting out there, meeting face to face and all this. Uh, and, and there's, you know, that is still existent, right? But there's a lot more networking that's going on online. And people, sometimes people over promote that type of networking. Yeah. What, what you, what's your thoughts on that? So I call this hybrid networking where mm-hmm. you want to do offline and online. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think online is very compelling. I mean, I can hit a button and hit thousands of people with a message that I could not necessarily do in a person unless I'm the speaker. It's one of the reasons mm-hmm. I like being a speaker. I, mm-hmm. It's a one-to-many situation. But I do think you need to have a little bit of both. Um, and so I think we can overdo it. And there are times where people say, you know, kind of want to say, calm down, enough already. You know, I know you're here. I know you're here. I know you're here. I'm very mindful of this. I'm getting ready next week. I'll be doing three cities. I'll be doing Phoenix, Dallas, and Austin. Mm. Um, I will let people know, but I want to be thoughtful about how I let people know. And I also want to be sure people feel if they're invited, you know, to kind of go back to why I feel important about networking is I know what it felt like to be left out when I traveled and and moved to new schools. Mm. And, um, you know, I went in one situation, I moved from Indiana, smack in the middle of the United States to Bangkok, Thailand, and started a new school in January, the middle of my junior year of high school. Yeah, that, that's went, that's char- yeah. character building for any child, right? <laughs> it is. And then I went back to rural Indiana, um, and I actually will see one of my um, high school friends in Phoenix next week. 
And so part of it was, was how do I feel fit? You know, how can I get fit in and, and included? And, um, you know, it's, it's, I saw the taping of the Big Bang Theory recently, and it was interesting. There was a couple there who got engaged. He proposed. Oh, wow. They, they were both in wheelchairs, oh. and they bonded over the Big Bang Theory because they were special needs people who were left out of what a lot of society was. And he wanted to propose at a place where they talked about how they could feel included. Oh, wow. That's awesome. It was amazing. And so part of it is how can we make somebody feel included? And when mm -hmm. you make somebody feel included or a part of it, that is going to get you closer to the sale. Or in some cases, it may be the donation. It may be the hire. It may be something, you know, that kind of a transaction. So there's an interesting um, chapter you have on on body language, voice, words, right? So that's something that, um, you know, sometimes people struggle with. You were mentioning earlier about the, you know, the gregarious flamboyant schmoozer, right, who comes in and dominates, you know, tries to dominate the room. Um, and that often makes other people kind of draw back because they think, well, well, I'm, that's not really me, yeah. so therefore I'm not a good networker. And there was a gentleman who came up to me at the end of the workshop yesterday, and these were very, very talented people who were in one of the top world institutions, and he says, I'm really shy. This is very difficult for me. I was so proud of him for saying something to me afterwards, and he was sitting next to the schmoozer, and I, <laughs> um, and so, but I just said, you know, and, and there's a wonderful book called Beyond Shyness that I recommend to people who, mm. uh, who you know, experience some parts of the shyness. I would have never thought of myself as shy, but I realized what I was, what I was, and mm -hmm. I still have times with, is I'm hesitant to share my skills and my gifts. Mm. And so I said to him, you know, if you're feeling hesitant to do this, you're thinking about yourself. You're not thinking the other person needs what I have. Yeah. The other piece of person needs, they need it. They need a CRM. They need training. They need a car. They need a home. They need clothes. They need food. So they have a need. They're trying to find the best place to get that need solved. Yeah, I like the way you, you turn that around. So instead of focusing in on, you know, say, I'm focusing in on myself and I'm feeling all, well, you know, I'm a bit un uncomfortable here. What you're saying is you're saying, well, something selfish. You know, go out and share share your talent, share what you have, share your product or service, share your knowledge, share your insights. Because uh, if you don't, you're you're kind of denying people. You're denying people, and it was I saw Martha Stewart speak at a at an event recently, and she was talking about her partnership with Kmart, and you know, she said she didn't think that people needed to spend a lot of money on towels. Mm -hmm. um, and she wanted to find good quality towels and she knew the supply chain. She was actually quite funny about knowing all the details about this, but she goes, my towels are 10 or 15 years old, but they're from Kmart, you know, and she could afford million dollar sure. towels. Um, but she saw a need for somebody else and she wanted to supply it. She is also a billionaire. So she's mm -hmm. made a lot of money. If a billion people spend a dollar on a towel, she's made a billion dollars. Yeah. So, um, you know, so part of it is, again, thinking, what does that person need um, and, and, and switch that around? I'm dyslexic. And so I do have something called a dyslexic introduction where I will say, um, I don't say my name first. I will say, I'm your speaker today. My name is Diane Darling versus, hi, I'm Diane Darling. They're thinking, who's that person? What's that name? And I'm like, oh, I'm speaking. Oh, yeah. What was your name? Right. Wow. Again, I want to think about how to make it easier for the other person. Yeah, exactly. And then we talk, we talk about bo uh, body language um, when you're networking like that, because it, I'm not sure if body language is a thing. I know everybody knows about it on a superficial level, but I don't think people think about it a lot. Yeah, and I think people often underestimate what crouching does. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to have, uh, you know, good standing up with a sense of um, not necessarily pride, but a sense of dignity and, and, you know, carriage of who you are. I mean, I think we're all kind of now with our heads down on our phones. And, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. when I do this, I'm like, oh, my neck is actually stiff. I need to, you know, actually stretch it for a bit. Um, that body language does send a lot. I was at, um, an event last night and I did notice a lot of people were at their phones and the body language I know as a speaker is very difficult to keep yeah. that sense of engagement. I actually use the phone as a part of my talk to get people to feel included and make them do a little bit of work and all that sort of stuff. Um, 
I, you want to also be mindful of your voice. Right now, there's a lot of up talk. Mm-hmm. And so I'm Diane Darling. Well, are you <laughs> Diane Darling or are you not Diane Darling? <laughs> you know, and, um, and when I hear this, I'll sometimes, you know, humorously say to somebody, are you Canadian? Yeah. And they'll say, well, you know, and often somebody who is Canadian will say, how did you figure that out? And I'm like, eh? Yes. And we'll just have a bit of a chuckle. But, you know, if you are in services that are maybe a bit more serious, an mm-hmm. accountant, uh, an attorney, you know, um, you're going to get a refund. Well, am I or am I not going to get a <laughs> refund? You know, um, the IRS is mad at you. Well, are they mad at me or are we are we good? You know, so... Um, you want to you want to have your body language, your words, and your voice all be be saying the same message, so they're not yeah. confusing right. of, of the list. And they're and they're fitting to the circumstance, right? Uh, Absolutely. So here's here's the thing, right? That um, I've been talking a lot to people about recently, and that is that we live in this super casual culture nowadays, right? You know, it's and. And I find that it's, you know, people people now kind of assume that they can bring this casualness into every interaction, you know, from the get go. Uh, and, and I find that, you know, maybe that works for some people, but I always think that you're never going to be penalized uh, for being a little bit more maybe a little bit more formal or dignified yep. to begin with. Um, but some but there are circumstances when being overly casual from the get go is going to tell against you. No, it will. There was a gentleman yesterday in the in the student workshop who, um, you know, we were practicing handshakes. Mm-hmm. And um, because when you say wait, you, you remember the weird ones, you don't remember yes. the good ones. Yeah, you know? yeah. and, and so you remember the ones that are too long, too sweaty. You know? <laughs> and so he, he you know, kind of patted me on the arm, you know, up here. And nice to meet you. And I'm thinking, OK. And and he was a non-U.S. national mm-hmm. male. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we had a discussion about it, that that could backfire on him. You know, um, we also talked about a wonderful scene in Downton Abbey with, um, Maggie Smith and her character is greeted by a gentleman and he puts his hand out and she said, oh, he must be an American because, (laughs) um, a a Brit would not put his hand out. He would wait for the woman to put her hand out a little little bit more of formality. Mm -hmm. So I think in some cases, you know, you can do all this in jeans. You can Mm -hmm. do this. You can have some thoughtfulness and and, um, elegance, if you will. I mean, Steve Jobs had it, even though he was in jeans Mm -hmm. much of his, much of his life. But I also do think at times that it isn't a bad idea to just to take it up a little bit of a notch um, and have a little bit, you know, I I would, when we were talking about, you know, today's video, I thought, hmm, now should I be in a t-shirt? Should I be in a formal? Should I wear pearls? You know, sh- you know, how formal should it be? And I'm thinking, well, you know, I want to be appropriately attired, but I don't want to be, you know, if it's pearls, that might be like, who in the heck does she think she is? Yes. This is a little bit more casual, <laughs> but I also still wanted to be, you know, appropriately mm-hmm. um, attired. So I do think it. one of the things I had um, folks do yesterday was I had them swap phones with a partner mm. and you would inter- you would do your introductions if you were at an event with me right. and I would film your introduction on your phone. So later on, you can see on a video how you look like <laughs> when you're coming across doing that. Um, when I when I work with people who are going up the, the ladder in their career, I'm um, often meals are a part of um, network yeah. events so i had them video themselves eating oh ah, that's great you know something i was I, i've told people all the time that uh, one company i was running uh, my uh, vp of sales when she interviewed salespeople, she had this great so she bring them in we do all the interviews and everything and then at the end of the morning of interview she go oh, that was probably a rough you know a rough day let's go for lunch she take them for lunch and it's amazing the amount of people who then drop their guard and thought oh this is no longer a part of the inter-. and she would and sometimes after lunch she goes oh been to lunch with that person not hiring them <laughs> Not hiring you. Absolutely. Same thing with the receptionist. Over mm-hmm. and over again, I'm learning more and more companies have a receptionist, but it's actually somebody on the team who's going to uh, be part of the hiring. Oh, and they clever. can see how the receptionist is treated because, you know, um, the other day I was at a very top consulting firm and this um, young lady came in and she looked like she was ready for an expedition to the Antarctic. <laughs> I mean, she had, you know, the muffs and the fur. I mean, it was cold. Yeah. It was cold. But take all of that off in the lobby, yeah, you know, yeah. get yourself ready for the first impression at the company is where you want to have it be, you know, the best. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, you know, I, I fight this because I'm a casual person. I would prefer to never have to wear makeup again. And um, I could be in my jeans or sweats everywhere I go. And the other day I ran some errands to the grocery store and I saw somebody who was a prospect and I hid because <laughs> I didn't want him to see me in my jeans and no makeup and my hair pulled back. And <laughs> I'm not saying necessarily I need to always look like I'm ready for, you Mm -hmm. know, a a sales call, but yeah, how someone treats the waiter, Mm -hmm. you know, how someone treats, um, you know, the other people are really important things when you're hiring. Um, And there is a war on talent right now. So in some cases, people feel like they, I just need a body, but they really pay a price for bringing in the wrong person. Yeah, for sure. In fact, actually, I saw a quote from, it's funny you should mention that, the waiter, because I saw a quote this morning from Muhammad Ali, who said, uh, he said, I, d- I don't judge people, you know, obviously, when he was alive, he said, I don't judge people on how they treat me, I judge them on how they treat the waiter. Absolutely. There's a gentleman here, Bill Bradley, who was a senator and yeah. a basketball mm-hmm. star, and he tells a very, I've seen him tell this story, so I know it's it came from him, but he tells the story about being in a restaurant, um, and um, and he asked the, the waitress for some more butter, and she's going around and doing the coffee and that sort of stuff, and, you know, he's getting a little impatient, and he said, I asked for some butter, and she goes, yes, I'll get it for you, and he says, do you know who I am? He was kind of in his younger, more brash days. And she says, no, who are you? And he said, you know, basketball player, senator, whatever Mm -hmm. he was. And she says, isn't that wonderful? Do you know who I am? And he says, who are you? And she goes, I'm the one with the butter. (laughs) I love it. Oh, I love it. I bet you she got a big tip that night. I think she did. And, you know, and and he loved, I could, you could see he really liked telling the story because he had made a mistake and he had learned from it. So in the last couple of minutes, uh, places to network, right? Um, where where do you recommend that people go? What are uh, maybe some of the more surprising places that are good for networking? So there's two parts of this is the formal yeah. strategic networking. And then there's the informal networking. And then there's kind of that, gee, you happen to sit next to me on the plane and here right. there's an opportunity. So let me talk about all of those. In the strategic part, I have something called the weather report, which is whether or not you go. Mm. Is there time for networking um, at that event? Um, is it structured? I like it when it's structured. Or somebody like me who is hired to kind of facilitate right. that because it, the introverts cringe, you mm-hmm. know, and the, it's very, it's a tougher environment for them. And we are roughly fifty percent of the population. I self-test as an introvert, but I'm very friendly, mm-hmm. so people get confused. I start with a full tank. The more people I meet, the lower it goes, and then finally I hit the wall and I need to be home. <laughs> Um, so you want to think about, is there a role for you? For example, I love handing out name tags. Um, the other day I volunteered to work at a conference. Um, one, it saved me a lot of money to, for, to pay for it, but it also gave me a chance to meet a lot of people because I was a volunteer and I got some interaction. Mm. So I like to have a job. If I'm not the speaker, my preference is to be the speaker and to get a paycheck. But if not, I like to have a role. I mm-hmm. want to have some way for me to make a contribution to the event. And that's something I like to do. Also with the, that weather report is in some cases, I encourage people to think about events where there's nothing at stake. Think about this learning to drive a stick shift and you don't pick this up. You don't pick a Mercedes. Right. You pick a lower risk situation. So maybe find two or three events where it's a low risk situation if you're starting out or if you need a tune up, which I think you need all that, you know, Mm -hmm. on occasions we need tune ups. And so find something where it really doesn't matter if you fail. It doesn't, you know, so if you're practicing your dyslexic introduction, um, if you have children, you would get a dyslexic introduction right away. I'm so-and-so's, you know, mom or dad, you have no name. In business, it's, you know, you're not going to start out with uh, that situation. So with the strategic part, is it, uh, is it a location I might be interested in going to? Is it a forum that would be of interest? Is there time for networking? Um, I also like to think about a question that I can ask during the Q&A. One, I get to meet everyone in the room because I ask a question if I'm not the speaker. Mm-hmm. And two, I get to learn a little bit more and that I, I pay attention differently when I'm doing that. The informal networking is when you're going to um, having, uh, you know, a meal after an interview or, you know, um, it's kind of it's with it's within an organization, but there's not necessarily a set agenda Mm -hmm. with that. Um, And I do think this is very important. This is also one of the things that in the last few years has become more apparent that women have been left out of this. The men go to for a beer and a burger 
or they'll go for a run. And so women have in some cases found themselves left out of those not informal networking mm-hmm. situations. And now it's a, it's definitely a tricky time for that. How do you engage that in an era of some of the sexual is- sure. issues that we're facing? But, um, you know, so one of the things I say is, you know, be mindful of your drinking, be mindful of, you know, your com- conversations and things like that. But you do want to include, be more inclusive in those environments than not inclusive. Yeah. And then there is the random moment where I actually think in some cases you can do some fun networking. People think I'm a little crazy, but when I'm at airports in the security line, I get into conversations with people. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to get hurt of a stranger because there's cameras everywhere. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen bad to me. But I sometimes will say, hey, are you hit, set, heading anywhere warm because it's cold? Right. You know, sometimes you'll get somebody who's really grumpy. Or I'll say, tell me about your roller bag. I'm always looking for a good bag. I wear them out so quickly. You're, it, people are bored in the security line. If you And you can have a little bit of a conversation. I do have my business cards in my back pocket. So if it turns out it's an interesting conversation, I can hand them um, a bit of a card. I've actually gotten some interesting conversations with people in that. And it's time. You're going to go through security and you're going to leave. And you're mm-hmm. you're not stuck on that. Um, on flights, I do tend to talk to people at the end when we're landing versus the beginning. Because mm-hmm. I don't want them to think I'm going to chat the whole flight. <laughs> Um, on subways, I might say, you know, hey, tell me about that book. The next stop is mine. I'm looking for, you know, an interesting next book. Um, again, they hear the next stop is mine. I'm getting rid of this strange person. Um, I one time I was had house guests and I had picked up a couple of maps of Boston. And I had them in my hand when I was on the subway and people were chatting to me. How long are you going to be in Boston? No one has ever talked to me on the subway <laughs> before, but they were telling me their favorite ba- pubs and and things like that because they thought I was a stranger. So um, use those opportunities. Um, Another thing I encourage people to do is to talk to people who have dogs Mm -hmm. when you're out for a walk. Um, You know, I think in some cases dogs are networking props. Yeah, or talk to the dogs maybe too. Well, talk to the dog and and, and ask permission to pet the dog, (laughs) but, you know, um, you know, tell me how you like having a dog in the Mm. city or what an interesting breed or, Mm -hmm. you know... um, yeah. So anyhow, along those lines. So yeah. those are just a three no, different, I, different buckets. Yeah, but I, I love that because I love the, also the fact the way you've said about you know talking to somebody when the plane is coming to land or talking to in in those contained areas so that the person you're talking to feels more comfortable talking to you because they know there's a, a finish to it, right? Yeah. Because you're right. Because we all kind of when the you know you sit down in the airplane and maybe. You know, maybe you've got your book, maybe you've got some work to do or whatever. And the person immediately launches in at the beginning. And you think, oh, this is going to be a long five hours. <laughs> I know, I know. I I don't do much knitting, but I did for a while. Mm-hmm. I, in the day with when security was especially tight, I would bring wooden needles because they would let you bring those on. And I would knit a scarf and I could get one done <laughs> on a flight if someone was chatting. And I also would leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The speaker Larry Winget, he used to claim that he had a he had a, a book with a fake cover which said, you know, selling life insurance on airplanes, and he would <laughs> pick that out. And he said, there, nobody bothered him after that. Oh. <laughs> you know, I, I I think those are interesting, and also at mm-hmm. times I think you do alienate people yeah, and sure, yeah. gen, genuine people, and I and I think it's also okay to say to somebody who is maybe a little bit chatty you know what, I'm a little tired. I do need to get a project done. Can we chat maybe in a half an hour Mm -hmm. or something like that? And, and let them know you're not trying to be unfriendly, but you're also needing to get something done. Excellent. Well, listen, Diane, this has been fascinating. Uh, The time has flown here. So Diane Darling, um, check out her books, the the network uh, survival guide and her other book, uh, networking for career success. So before we go, Diane, do you want to tell people just a little bit more about yourself and how they can find out more about you and contact you? Sure, they can contact me on dianedarling.com is probably the easiest way. And I have a fun chart called How to Work a Room on that where it gives you a diagram. I'm a speaker at conferences, uh, and and sometimes it's about sales. Sometimes it's um, for um, relationship management. Non-sales professionals like attorneys, accountants are some groups I help out. One thing that's been really interesting is the book now is in nine languages. And so this is an interesting uh, issue that we face around the world Mm -hmm. to how can we connect with people. And maybe one last thing I'll leave with you. I'm on planes a lot. And one time 
Um, I looked up and this little guy looked at me and says, I'm four. How old are you? (laughs) And I said, I'm a little older than four. And he says, how much older than four? And I realized when we're little, we don't have any fear. Yeah. yeah, He had no fear. And his dad was like, leave the lady alone. And, um, and he and I had this fun little conversation, you know, for a good chunk of the flight. As we get older, we become more fearful. So Mm. Reconnect with your inner four-year-old and say hi to somebody and say, what can I do to help you out today? And in some cases, it may be just saying hi. Yeah, no, that's fantastic, isn't it? And again, this has been fascinating. Love the conversation. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview soon. I look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you.